Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Teresia, and this is my master project about structural geology interpretation with deep learning and critical assessment of fault extraction and characterization methods. This project is supported by Earth Science Analytics. As a background, fault analysis plays an important role in subsurface geoscience. Good prediction of fault network helps the prediction of say compartmentalization, flow rate, and understanding the basin evolution. However, popular 3D seismic interpretation methods like manual interpretation of fault sticks and seismic attribute extraction are often linked to either time and efficiency or inaccuracy. Deep learning is currently being developed with the expectation to allow accurate and fast interpretation of faults. As an overview, 3D seismic cube of two rift basins are used for this analysis. The aims are to compare two areas of rift basin and to compare the performance of deep learning fault prediction with the conventional methods. Faults are predicted using four methods. The first method is the manual fault interpretation. The second method is seismic variance attribute expression and two types of deep learning methods, which is trained with manual fault interpretation, method three, and trained with synthetic seismic, method four. For the fault quantification, first, the seismic cube is sliced onto three horizons, which is main synth late synth and post riff, to show the fault evolution through time. Then, applying all methods of fault prediction to this horizon, generating the 2D fault network. Then, each of them is quantified using the 2D intensity and topology. Finally, the fault prediction of different methods are compared, then the two areas are compared. Both data sets are located in offshore Northwest Australia, which is CV, and canning block. It is interesting to compare these areas as they have different fault pattern. CB has more collinear fault pattern while canning has more orthorhombic fault pattern. The study focused in the Mesozoic resting phase and this is the three horizons I mentioned before. What is deep learning? Deep learning is a method that allows computer to solve problems with experience and data. To train the deep learning system, in this study, I manually interpreted faults on several seismic inlines and crosslines and feed it to the system. This is method three. With this knowledge, the deep learning produced fault prediction mimicking human interpretation. Then, I review the result. If it's good, the prediction will be applied to every inlines and crossline. If it's not good enough, I reevaluate my fault input, for example, whether my fault sit on the right place. Then train again the data. If the fault input is good, but the prediction is not good, there are things called hyperparameters that will tweak the deep learning system to enable, disable, or change the weight of certain parameters within the system. Fault prediction of different methods are then compared. Fault networks are quantified using 2D fault intensity and topology. Topology is the arrangement of fault network focusing on fault termination and different fault intersection called nodes. This is important as areas which have same geometrical fault elements but different in topology are different in terms of network connectivity, like the area A and B. There are three types of nodes. I, fracture terminations, Y, joints or splays, and X, intersections. Branch is what connects the nodes. The proportion is then plotted to a ternary diagram, where I means more isolated, where X or Y means more connected. It is also quantified as a connection per branch. This is the result from TB, showing fault prediction from manual interpretation, 
variance attributes, and deep learning methods trained with manual label. The manual interpretation by Pan et al., which takes three weeks to interpret, has clear fault prediction that only capture the major faults. The variance attribute extraction is able to recognize both post polygonal and syndrome deep faults. However, the fault shapes are not distinct and contain a lot of noises. The deep learning method generates the best fault prediction as it recognizes small faults in addition to big faults and the shapes are distinct. It also removes noises. The deep learning fault prediction is used in later area comparison. Despite showing similar fault patterns, the fault trends and quantification are quite different for each method. Manual fault prediction has the lowest value for the 2D intensity and connection per branch. For example, on the main sunroof, its 2D intensity is 0.5 volt per kilometer, where for variance and deep learning, it's about 0.8. Also, manual fault prediction shows the strongest northeast-southwest orientation compared to the other methods. However, it only captures larger faults, while the other model captures shorter faults as well in their orientation. It is also shown in the topology plot that manual fault prediction resulted in more I nodes and II branches, leading to less connected fault networks. The faults are evolved through time. The late synroof horizon shows a similar pattern with main synroof, but some of the big faults have not propagated up to this level, leading to less connected fault networks. The post roof fault pattern is totally different from the synroofs, showing polygonal fault pattern. This is the result from Canning, showing fault prediction from variance and two deep learning methods. Similar to CB, the variance attribute expression is able to recognize faults, but its shapes are not distinct and contain a lot of noises. Manually trained deep learning fault prediction produces distinct fault shapes on inlines and cross lines. It also removes noises. However, the fault shapes on horizon slices are not really distinct, as the prediction might not be consistent on every inline and cross line. Where synthetic trained deep learning fault prediction by Moser et al. recognized faults on the inline and cross line. And although the faults are thick, this model generates sharp fault networks on the horizon slices. As the topology analyzes use the horizon slices, the fault model is considered the best and used in CB canning comparison. Fault networks generated from all methods show significant differences in all horizons. Fault network on synroof horizon shows orthorhombic faulting in north-south and northeast-southwest direction. The minor east-west and northwest-southeast fault trend represents a smaller fault perpendicularly connecting the major faults, and similar to CB, late synthroth horizons has a similar pattern with main synthroth with less connected fault network. The post growth horizon shows polygonal fault pattern with fault front in all directions. From the topology plot, the most connected network is the post growth polygonal fault network. This horizon has fewer I nodes or CC branches and the connection per branch is about 1.8 and 2D intensity are also the greatest, about 2.4. The least connected fault network is the late single horizons with connection per branch about 1.5 to 1.7 and 2D intensity 0.7 to 1.1 faults per kilometer. This is the comparison of DB and Canning from deep learning method, DB using method 3, and Canning using method 4. The fault network are quite different, both visually and in terms of quantitative fault network. Canning shows the orthorhombic fault pattern, while DB shows more collinear fault pattern. The post roof horizon shows similar polygonal fault pattern, but with a slightly different trend. For Canning, 
still apparently being influenced by the previous orthorhombic fabric. In terms of typology, Canning has more wine notes, CC branches, and greater connection per branch compared to CB on every structural level, which leads to better fold network connectivity. As a point of discussion, how does typology for both data sets vary for folds of similar age, considering they were exposed to the same regional tectonics? According to a study by McCormack and Maclay, canning or thorambic fabric were developed during the same event of Mesozoic Synthrus period. This is possible when there is a dominant vertical and horizontal stress. While the plane strain falls symmetry like the one observed in Phoebe, develop when there is only a vertical stress dominant but not the horizontal stress. The question arises how did Phoebe and Canning develop under different stress conditions? In this case, the orientation of pre existing basement trends may cause stress deflection. Canning is located further landward on the pre-existing structure of the failed intracratonic basin, where the pre rift sediment is thickening towards the hanging wall. CB is closer to the Jurassic Rift axis, where its pre rift interval does not show any evidence of structural inheritance, such as thickness variation. This condition may cause different stress deflection or fault reactivation. The second point of discussion the deep learning model clearly helped the fault in prediction. However, two deep learning models could have different results, and how reliable is the deep learning model? This is from Canning, where model A is a manually labeled train and model B is synthetic seismic train, where model B is better. It is because manual fault input might differ from the actual fault location and it's challenging to make precise and consistent label, especially in more complex data set like canning. Good human label and poor human label impact the deep learning fault prediction, while in the synthetic trained model, the true fault also acts as a label. Therefore, it will make more precise and consistent prediction. However, the synthetic seismic model used during training might not represent the actual seismic data and might not work well. To conclude, the deep learning fault network extraction are more detailed, resulted in higher fault network connectivity. Deep learning fault model succeeded to remove noises, hence more accurate. Label quality plays a significant role in producing the deep learning model. The fault network topology has evolved for each structural level. Canning fault network is more connected than PB on every structural level. Finally, deep learning enables the detailed quantification of fault network within two areas only in three month projects, and it has a lot of potential in the future to assist geoscientists. It has also some limitations. First one, building a good deep learning model takes time while most of industry geoscience projects are constrained by time. Pre-trained model with active learning can be a solution. And note that even the best model can only recognize seismically resolvable faults. The zones near the fault tips might be missing when the throw decreases below the seismic resolution, but can be reconstructed by knowing the relationship between throw and the radial distance from the fault center. If in the future, information such as full throw could be extracted and integrated automatically, the deep learning model might be able to predict the true fault network. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Would be really happy to discuss it with you.